Three Things to Consider The Desiderata by Max Ehrman Holy Spirit Prayer by Charlemagne and a C.H. Spurgeon sermon entitled Repentance After Conversion I've put these three things together for anyone wishing to deepen their understanding of the symbiotic nature of prayer for the saint. Prayer for the saint is as natural an outpouring for the redeemed child as the exhalation of each breath. It is the continual conversation through the abiding Holy Spirit which ever traverses Jacob's ladder, up and down betwixt the earthly and heavenly realms, does every spiritual comfort come down and every thankful heart go up and in so doing are mixed and made friends by love's sweet power. From John Donne. The first link is to the Desiderata, which I came across in my 20s and having always lived in an unbelieving environment, I was so starved of any spirituality that such gnawing hunger caused me to grasp at any snippets which crossed my radar. I thank my Lord that I was known to him from my mother's womb, or else I would not have had such hunger. I was different. I am horrified that today such a thing is called neurodivergent. We will not go there. Sadly, the devil has caught up as always, for every move of God which brings good and has hijacked spirituality to keep his own sound asleep in blissful ignorance of their condition. And remember that his own is the entire human race, not just the obviously evil. The whole world is under the power of the Spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Ephesians 2.2 2. Scripture informs us also to Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Ephesians 5.14 As the Apostle Paul wrestles with the knowledge of sin in Romans 7, we see that powerful forces work continuously against good, even in our own soul. We cannot escape it, but through the salvation of God in Christ. If a regenerated saint, an apostle no less, who was blinded by the very glory of the risen Lord on his way to Damascus, should so wrestle with the sin at work within him, then rest assured that unregenerate man is full of wrongness. It is his very nature to offend God and his human family, to either improve his own lot or to steal someone else's. So spirituality now means everything and anything other than seeking God or spending quality time in his presence. Complete strangers will delight in telling you that they are spiritual, not religious, and then reveal such spirituality to be nothing less than taking care of themselves in mind and body. I could go on, but suffice to say, this is the devil's work, to keep God out of the human heart, just as steadfastly as Christ seeks to enter in. The Desiderata then was so hijacked in the 1960s. The common myth was that the author of this poem was unknown and that it was written in the 17th century. The fact that it became popular in 1960s America is the most plausible explanation for this myth. Guru facilitated higher wisdom was the badge of modernity and the truth of the origin of the poem was really rather boring uncharitably so in my opinion, and it rather exposed the underlying arrogance of the free love and peace brigade of that era as the extremely selfish, decadent and immoral crusade that it actually was. Desiderata then means things that are desired 
and it was penned by Max Ehrman, who was an American lawyer who copyrighted it in 1927. He penned many other poems and said he wrote this because, and I quote, it counsels those virtues I felt most in need of. It counsels those, it counsels those virtues I felt most in need of. It is then an honest confession of failings rather than the declaration of superiority it later became by the false teachers. There will ever be those who do not practice whatsoever they preach. And so my point in these three offerings, the Desiderata for its author counselled those virtues he felt most in need of. It was answer from God into a human heart who had diligently sought such counsel. Before regeneration, if we are known to God, that is, our deepest thoughts are known to him. And whilst we may not have prayed specifically, we find our inner strivings, confusions and turmoil answered in myriad ways. One of those ways is in those strange prayers where we affirm something that we actually do not possess. See also Psalm 107. I hear it in songs, notably Known, Seen, Loved by the Christian singer Mariah and He Knows My Name by Francesca Battistelli, to name but two. With the acute hearing of the saint's ear, I believe they had each wrestled with doubt before being gifted these songs. I envisage Mariah sweating it out before being told. Is it not enough that you are known, seen and loved by me? And hey presto, the joy of the Lord flowed into her heart afresh and she just had to share it. Similarly, our dear Francesca no doubt concerned about her worldly popularity and success, was reminded that she didn't need her name in lights because her joy was that her heavenly father knew and loved her. Many times on our walk through this world, we are given such fresh remembrances of the first kiss of our saviour. He is an attentive beau, gracious, kind, thoughtful, caring and deeply affectionate towards his bride. He enables us to love and cherish him as unceasingly as he loves and cherishes us. For without his constant enabling, we would become as lukewarm as wife number 137, for example, in the vast harem of a loveless emperor. But no, Christ loves each saint as his only bride, as deeply and faithfully as the Father loves the Son. When this truth is revealed in your heart, your joy will be unceasing and you will ever tell of your love as found in the Song of Songs. The second link, also found in the playlist Christian Prayer Template and entitled Holy Spirit Prayer, is offered as a better philosophy for the saints than the Desiderata. Attributed to Charlemagne, who was a defender of the Christian faith against the Muslim invaders, this prayer speaks as any prayer should, in supplication to Almighty God, and not to feeble human hearts who simply want to live better. Charlemagne was a Catholic, but I have long since refused even the notion of denominations. It is an evil not to be entertained and the world needs to know that Christian is Christian is Christian. And if you call yourself by any other name, then Christ is not in you. Many centuries have passed since the evil and bloody internecine wars where Christians slayed each other and all under the banner of the beloved son who came to save, not to slaughter. And last but not least is the C.H. Spurgeon sermon entitled Repentance After Conversion. 
he addresses himself only to the saints and leads us into meditation upon the cross and affirms that repentance per se is lifelong rather than a one-off confession. He speaks of the divine joy of sorrow and weeping as the highest joy known to humankind and which will always be attendant upon the once stricken but now redeemed child of the living God. So may the God of all mercy, charity, forgiveness and love fill the hearts of the chosen recipients of this message with the joy of the Lord, even unto the salvation of their soul. In the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.